Ethan, what brings you to Malaysia? Well, I'm here doing communication training and coaching with okay. different organizations out here. Right. And what's that? Communication training well, and coaching. Communication training and coaching. It's working with individuals on how to be more comfortable and more effective in the communication that they do. And when you say communication, what do you mean by communication? I mean the way we literally making presentations or. Well, it's a uh, great question because sometimes when people hear communication, they think like telecom or phones. No, no. Answering, answering customer queries. <laughs> yeah, with communication, we're looking at how do, when you're talking, how do your listeners make sense out of what you're talking about? Right. Um, if you're giving a formal presentation, uh, it may mean how do you organize that? Or how do you change your delivery to make sure you maximize effectiveness? Okay. Or if you're a manager, <coughs> If you're a manager and you're trying to give feedback to a subordinate, how do you do that in a way that the subordinate then remains motivated? They don't shut down and become defensive, that kind of thing. You talk about presentation. I know for a fact that it's one of the most feared things in the world, right? Even more than that itself. Um, yes. how, how do you overcome this whole fear of uh, you know, being out in public and making a presentation? I'm glad you brought it up yep. because in some cases you might never overcome the fear. Mm -hmm. But the fear itself, the nervousness itself, isn't pretty much the issue. A lot of people get nervous. It's when the nervousness becomes so significant that it gets in the way of your communication. Mm -hmm. That's when you want to learn how to control it. And that you can definitely learn how to do. Okay. Some, some people say that nervousness is a good thing. Having a bit of nervousness before and presentation is actually a positive thing. Is that, is that? It can be. It can be. I mean, we hear that a lot. As speech yeah. coaches, I mean, look, our firms, we've been doing this, it's a family business, so we've been doing this for almost 50 years now. So we hear that kind of thing. A lot of that stems from sort of the theater using their energy, and yes, there is some, there's some truth to that. In the general sense, you've got to identify what it is that you believe about a particular speaking situation. Okay. So let's say if you're standing in front of a group of a thousand people and that makes you nervous, you've got to figure out why. Uh, in some cases, somebody else might only be in a group of six people and they're nervous. And the, the reason that we hear it as one of the top three fears, at least in the United States and worse outside of the United States, is because it might be different for different people. Okay. You set up this company, right? I, the speech improvement company, and you're president of it at this point in time. What, what does your role entail? I mean, you're also the senior coach uh, and the yep. trainer. So you, you, you play a dual role of running the business and also coaching. How yes. complex is that? And it's very challenging. And I would love to take the credit for setting up this company. However, I don't look like I was born in 1964. Yeah. Right, rather, the, the company started in 1964. Okay. Both of my parents have their PhDs in speech communication. Okay. There are a dozen coaches on our team. Right. All of us are formally educated at the graduate level or beyond in speech communication. So there's no one on our team that maybe they were in real estate or acting and that didn't work out, so we're doing this. Right. We've studied the topic. Right. So as the president, I have to, I work as a speech coach, but I also have to manage the business. It's, it's you know, I mean, the coaching is your passion, so that's what I like right. to do. So. And in business, I mean, many people underestimate the importance of communication. I, I know many business leaders, oh, that's a soft skill. What, what's your take on that, and what advice would you give such business leaders? Well, you know, a lot of people consider communication a soft skill, and a lot of organizations, it's a fatal flaw. It is a hard skill. If you cannot communicate effectively, you cannot be productive. And companies who see it as a soft skill, they think of it as an aftermath, and they're damaging the morale, the productivity, and ultimately the financial success of that company. We see it in organizations, those organizations who do take it seriously and invest time and effort and dollars into making sure their people can communicate effectively, not just a presentations class, but really get it, they thrive. Okay, you have examples of that? Well, take a look at companies like Google, okay. right? Who we interviewed in the book, right? Okay. So Google believes heavily in communication. They believe in what we call a culture of communication, mm -hmm. which means that from the top down, it's, it's uh, reinforced, it is encouraged. Right. They offer group training, private coaching. I mean, those are specific things, but in addition to that, they really hammer into managers that you have got to be communicating. Locally here in Malaysia, Surya KLCC believes in a culture of communicating. Yeah. So departments that at one time weren't connecting are now connecting really well, okay. and the communication flows. So you've written this book, Mastering Communications, I work with, with a co-author, right? Yes. Um, what's the essence of this book? Why should I buy it? And you know, what's one big idea that comes out of this book? This book is going to change your life it will. as a communicator. <laughs> There's no question about it. All right. And, and, I, and it sounds so kind of corny. It, it's, it's absolutely true. There you go. Okay. I, and, I why, say, and why? Why would it change my life? This, this book 
will have a tremendous impact on anybody's life who reads it, who, as they are strengthening their communication. Yep. In chapter one, right away, we talk about what Aristotle calls inductive and deductive reasoning, mm -hmm. which many people have heard those words before or studied them in school. We bring it into modern day average, what we call shirt sleeve English, plain English. How do you use this stuff in your life? If you get frustrated when someone's talking to you and you don't listen to them, that's a problem. Right? If when you're talking, your listeners tune you out, that's a problem yeah. because you're not being effective. We teach you the tools and the techniques on how to do it that have been taught to leaders of countries, leaders of, of companies all over the world that we've been doing for these past 10, 20, well, 45 years now. Yeah. And then we give case studies. So here's how this organization is doing it. So the book is really, really helpful. And it's relevant to celebrities as much as Absolutely. country leaders. Back as in much the States, uh, yep. Back in the States, we work with a lot of celebrities. Yeah. And because what happens is on, on film, you may, because a lot of people are like, you work with a celebrity? Why? Right. On film, they're acting. Yep. And they work with an acting coach. Right. But let's say they, they're at an award ceremony. If you've ever seen it in an award ceremony where there's a celebrity very nervous, well, that's very real, first of all. They're human like everybody else. Right. And they get very, very nervous. And you can't just get rid of that because you've learned how to deal with stage fright in a theater or on screen. It's a different kind of communicating you need to learn how to master. Another thing